Josh was not happy with their performance, and so generally when that happens, you make some changes. Jackets have not played since a 79-66 loss to Clemson 10 days ago. Virginia beat Albany the other night by 20 in Charlottesville. Burt Smith, Tommy Morrissey, Courtney Green on the whistle, and away we go from Midtown Atlanta. And here is Kihei Clark and the Cavaliers. Now, Georgia Tech's also focused on some defensive elements here in that 10-day hiatus too, Dan. Well, they're, they're in their zone, and in both of their defenses, man-to-man -man or zone, they've done a great job defending the three-point line, but they have been unable to cut off people on the interior. Clemson, Clemson's inside game really wrecked him in there. Of course, not everybody has P.J. Hall. Right. But so Georgia Tech, they want to continue to defend the three effectively, but they've got to figure out a way to defend the interior a little better. Here is Clark at the right. Franklin back for Kihei Clark. Foul on area, Gardner. And the Cavaliers on the board with Jaden Gardner. Here's a look at Josh Pastner's five. Terry on the floor for the first time as a starter since Marquette. Back in November with Sturdivant. Debo Coleman has been struggling more. And Rodney Howard as they try and get some continuity in the post play with the ACC table underway. And Terry on a strong drive and score. Tough shot to make for the Gardner-Webb transfer, Lance Terry. It's interesting, Wes. Terry is not a guy who drives a lot. He's only got 10 free throw attempts on the year, but he's very quick and he's very athletic. Caden Shedrick out in the corner. Three ball is good. Armand Franklin, his 21st three of the year in Virginia, an early three-point lead. You see Reese Beekman returning to the Virginia starting lineup today. Missed Albany the other night, nursing a bit of a hamstring injury. Quick look inside, turned over, and the Cavaliers with the giveaway from Georgia Tech. And now Virginia's not really looking to push, but they also can get down the court quickly when they want to. Gardner off the baseline, spins off in the rebound for Coleman. Now Gardner is very dangerous in the mid-range. Here is Terry. Got to stay with Terry. He is a very good catch-and-shoot three-point guy. Coleman had his pocket pick. Great play by Franklin. He'll get it in return. The transition three for Armand Franklin. Well, so see, Wes, that's my point. Virginia will get the ball and go. And if they're going to make threes in transition, might be a long night for the Yellow Jack. Josh Pastner hinted transition offense and defense were going to be critical today for his team. Start of it. Here's Coleman. Virginia in their man-to-man. Sturdivant the fall away. Tough shot to make for Kyle Sturdivant. Well, he's got a couple inches and a few pounds on Kihei Clark. Mm. Last couple of ball games, he's averaged almost 14 points. And wins against uh, Alabama State and a loss against Clemson. Franklin. Early threes, and that one spins away, and Howard and Gardner battle for it. Last touch by the Cavaliers. Tony Bennett, 14th season, and sitting on the doorstep today of potentially win number 326, which would tie him with the legendary Terry Holland for the most wins in Virginia history by head coach. Here is Moore. Sturdivant. Here's Rodney Howard. He plays a pivotal role in moving the basketball today against this pack line. Yes, he does. He spends a lot of time. There's Terry. There's Terry again with a drive. But Howard does a great job with passing and dribble handoffs. And Beekman tried to get Virginia going maybe too fast in transition. Well, Vir Virginia would like to get out and get some easy shots. That would frustrate Josh Pastner. But you don't want to throw the ball away if you're the Cavaliers. Yep. Pastor is 26 and 24 against the ACC in his seven years in Atlanta at home. Now Virginia's beaten Georgia Tech nine straight times, Wes. Yep. Tony Bennett is 16 and two against the Jackets. In a series that dates all the way back to the late 1940s. Coleman launching. High arcing three for Devo Coleman. First triple of the day for Georgia Tech. And that's a really good sign for Georgia Tech because Debo Coleman, he shot 40% from three last year. He just hasn't shot the three well. Yep. So if he can get going, that's a key for the Yellow Jackets because Debo Coleman has deep, deep range. 
19 of 54 on the year now is Coleman, the sophomore from Memphis. Clark, nice bounce pass. Gardner, the catch and score for his second basket. Uh, Kihei Clark has been doing that for five years, and that's one of the things that Georgia Tech was very concerned about. They push out on that zone. They get a little too close to the guy with the ball, and they can allow some dribble penetration. Howard, here's Coleman. Trying to find an alley. On the drive, had it knocked away. Franklin tried to make the save, punched out by Coleman, and it will stay with the Cavaliers. Virginia, a three-point lead early in Atlanta. Jaden Gardner's got a couple of field goals. Armand Franklin, a couple of triples. Back on Bennett on the doorstep today of tying Terry Holland for all-time wins as Virginia's head basketball coach at 326. That doesn't seem possible, but it speaks to the work he's done in 14 seasons. It has, and uh, you know, if you tie Terry Holland, you've done something. Yep, because Terry Holland is one of the greatest. Yep, and uh, what a beautiful piece yesterday from David Teal in the Richmond Times Dispatch about Terry Holland and his legacy at the University of Virginia. Well, Wes, if we're really fortunate in our lives, there's somebody outside of our family who's a really significant person who helps make us what we are. And for me, that was Terry Holland. Yep, and you see his accolades and the irony Two Final Four trips, 81 to Philadelphia, 84 to Seattle. And there's the star of the 84 team, the Magic Man, Jim Miller, who's on radio with John Freeman today, back to the uh, Commonwealth. And, of course, Terry Holland, the 1976 ACC tournament with Wally Walker at Landover is regarded as one of the great ACC tournaments of all time and certainly a landmark event for the University of Virginia. A couple of changes out of the timeout. Isaac McNeely has come into the ball game for Virginia for the first time. So we get a look at McNeely, who spelled Reese Beekman during the timeout, and inside the catch and score, Rodney Howard's first points for the Jackets. Pull Georgia Tech to within one. Georgia Tech West, they're a little bit undersized, but they've got tremendous quickness. Shedrick's been quiet early, huh? Clark, bounce pass, here's Gardner. And a nice pass for the dunk from Caden Shedwin. Must have hurt me. <laughs> That's a great play by Gardner. And again, you see the problems that Georgia Tech faces when they allow that penetration to the interior of the zone, whether it be by the pass or by the dribble. Here is Howard off the post at the high side on the left. Nice pass, Coleman the catch. It'll be a block. He was in the restricted area. Yeah, sure was. Armand Franklin, the... Indiana transfer will draw Virginia's first foul. Well, of course, Virginia plays that pack line defense, and Franklin tries to step in, West. but the rule is if any part of your body is on or above that restricted area, and his heel was on the restricted area line. Debo Coleman shoots 67%. Georgia Tech only 65 and a half in conference play. First one good. Don't forget more ACC basketball coming up for you Wednesday night on ACC Network. Dan and I'll be in Raleigh for number 17, Duke, visiting NC State. And then at 9 o'clock, the Corey cast at Chapel Hill. <laughs> Wake Forest visits 25th-ranked North Carolina. Corey Alexander with Randolph Childress. Basketball deep dive with C.A. and Randolph. Coming up for you on ACC Network, always available for you on the ESPN app. Weston, you saw that Beekman has now come back in the game. And it's interesting when a guy's got a hamstring problem, Interesting to see how he comes back the second time after sitting down for a minute or so. Vanderplass on the floor for the first time to spell Cedric and Caparo. Francisco comes to the deck for Virginia as well. Here's Clark launching a three from the left. It's good. Kihei Clark's 15th three of the year is his first points today. And that is the third three that the Cavaliers have made in this game, and that is a great sign for Virginia. Average just under seven a ball game. Coming into Atlanta. On the drive, Sturdivant. Foul lane. Howard got the roll. Howard's done a nice job making himself available in there, Wes. Georgia Tech does not rely on him to do a lot of scoring, but around the basket, he can be very dangerous. He cut back to three. Here's Beekman. Oh, what a talented player. Multi-dimensional oh. guy, Dan. For well, Tony Bennett. And he adds an element of speed that Virginia, I think, really needs to be successful. On the drive, skip out. Vanderplas, the three. Front rim miss, slapped out of there. Last touch by the Cavaliers. 
And with that, Miles Kelly, Davon Smith off the Georgia Tech bench. Well, Kelly and Smith have been called back, as has Javon Franklin. Everybody's been called back. All three guys brought back by Josh Pastner, so there will be no line change <laughs> for the Jackets here. Start event with Clark defending for the Cavaliers. Georgia Tech has done a nice ball getting the job, nice job getting the ball inside that Virginia defense. Left-handed look by Moore is short. Now the shot was close, West, but that was an extremely difficult shot, well defended by the Cavaliers. McNeely, the young freshman, started against Albany the other night with the Beekman injury. He now plays with Reese Beekman. We're almost eight minutes in. Out of a double team, here's Beekman on the drive, all the way to the glass. And that's what Beekman gives you, Wes. He's got that element of explosiveness. Well, and you can't forget he led the league in assists last year, Dan. Well, Wes, he does so many things for Virginia. Might be one of the most underrated players in the conference. He is fourth in the conference in assists coming in. We get a foul, and that is going to be on Francisco Caparo. It'll be his first. Second on Virginia, but Reese Beekman back on the floor, gets all the way to the window. The Virginia lead five in Atlanta. Who's getting ready to check into the lineup here for Georgia Tech out of this timeout. Dan, he did not start today for the first time in eight games, and his progress the last seven as a starter is impressive. But it really is. He, he When he's in the game, Wes, he can dominate the ball. He's very aggressive offensively. He's looking to score. He is a high-volume three-point shooter. Yeah. Yeah, his, his percentage almost is 38, almost 38%, so that is a good three-point shooting percentage yeah. for somebody that launches as many as he does. He's attempted 66 on the year, so Kelly checks into the lineup, as does the 6'7 grad transfer, Javon Franklin, for the first time today for Georgia Tech. Now, Franklin's playing a little bit of an uphill battle today. Virginia's a much bigger team, certainly with Shedrick on the floor. Caparo as well, and there's a take away by Vanderplas. He went for the dunk, and Davon Smith reaches in and keeps Ben Vanderplas from the easy get. You know, Wes, people talk about how the Virginia defense comes out there and aggressively attacks the screen, and you don't see that hardly ever where the big guy just slaps it away from the guard. Smith did a nice job to recover and prevent an easy two. Well, so here's Ben Vanderplas to the line, 63% on the year. First free throws of the day for Virginia. Now look at this, Dan. We all know he's from Ohio as a grad transfer. He's been at Vanderplas by given name, and his dad played college ball at Wisconsin Green Bay with Tony Bennett. And of course, Dick Bennett was their coach. So essentially, he's named after his coach. And uh, that, that's true. And Tony Bennett said that, you know, Vanderplas' dad was in his wedding. And they said he couldn't recruit that guy out of the transfer portal. He couldn't get anybody. <laughs> In today's world, that's saying something, too. <laughs> Six-point lead for the Cavaliers off the one-of-two line shooting of Vanderplas. And that's what, another area where Virginia and their recent struggles, and, of course, the team that's lost only two games, it's hard to say they've struggled. But the Cavaliers, they're not getting to the free throw line as much, and they're not converting at as high a rate as they were earlier in the season. Missed by the Jackets. Reese Beekman back on the floor with McNeely, Gardner, Vanderplas, and Armand Franklin. So Reese Beekman essentially runs the offense, if you will, here for Tony Bennett. That matchup zone is a very tough thing to play against. McNeely guns and hits. And Virginia now, Wes, they have converted four three-point baskets in the game. They average 6.7 in every game this regular season. It's a good sign for Tony Bennett's club to come in here and knock down triples, Dan. Well, it is, and I think this is a Virginia team, Wes. You know, they were making the three-pointers at a higher rate earlier in the year, too. I think this team really needs to make nine or ten a game to be at the optimum offensively. Moore saves it on the floor to Coleman. Seven to shoot for the Jackets, who have a frenetic possession on their hands. Coleman on the drive, and we're going to get a charge called on... Debo Coleman. Well, Coleman West, you used the word frenetic, and that was exactly right. Coleman is really trying to force something, and this time Ben Vanderplas gets over. He's standing there waiting for him, well outside the restricted area. And that, of course, Virginia is noted for their defense. 
Five turnovers by Georgia Tech. Nine point lead for the Cavaliers. We're not quite to the midway point of half one. In the corner, Franklin. Vanderplas at the foul line. Quick ball movement. McNeely a catch and shoot too strong. Gardner tried for the backside rebound and ultimately belongs to Sturdivant. The most interesting thing about that play, Wes, was how in the world did Vanderplas keep his pivot foot? Yeah. Sturdivant on the drive. You know Kelly wants to launch. Well, Kelly is, uh, we say, he's a high-volume three-point shooter, but he's got the quickness that he can get to the, get inside, try to get to the line. Sturdivant. Wheels around. Here's Howard, who had a couple buckets early. And now a Virginia foul out of the fray. Well, that was uh, Gardner just being a little overly aggressive on the inside, Wes. He had great position and is trying to reach over, reach around and through Franklin. And the officials are just never going to let you do that. And Caden Shedrick is going to get Jaden Gardner's spot. Tony Bennett is notorious. Once you get two, you sit, right? Right. And... I think with the way Jaden Gardner started this ball game, he wants to limit Gardner here to see if he can get him to the locker room with under two. Well, lots of times in a game, and you know your players, and sometimes a guy gets one foul, and he right away is going to get another one. And Look at Terry, a little sidestep three, front rim miss, and McNeely the rebound. Terry's a very good three-point shooter, but I think he's much better as a catch-and-shoot guy rather than off the dribble. Right. Here's McNeely. Cavaliers with this nine-point lead ahead of nine to go in this half in Atlanta. And you can't beat a zone just by keeping the ball on the outside. You've got to get some dribble penetration. Tony Bennett, a little frustrated with McGeeley. He had an open shot, and he didn't shoot it. Kelly to the basket and scores on Cedric. Well, Beekman, he gets this turnover because now the shot clock is running down. McNeely had a shot and didn't take it, and Shedrick's trying to get back. But we told you about how dynamic Miles Kelly can be. That's a 6'11 guy he's challenging, Wes. And he's going to get an opportunity to go to the line. Miles Kelly, fearless going on Caden Shedrick that time. Draw Shedrick's first. But that, fourth on Virginia. That whole thing, Wes, was a direct result of McNeely passing up an open shot. Yeah, and for that, Kyle or Ryan Dunn replaces Isaac McNeely. 6'8 freshman from Freeport, New York, is Dunn, averaging about 12 minutes a ball game. And here is Kelly at the line, an 83% free throw shooter. Best on the ledger for Josh Pastner, and he's got a three-point trip, and Georgia Tech within six now. And Georgia Tech now with a little bit of pressure. Virginia came in hitting just 26% from behind the three-point line in their two league games. They have opened up here, though, by riding a three, and Franklin trying to add to it, cannot. And we're going to get another foul, and I think Shedrick has picked up two in just a change of the floor, Dan. Yeah, he sure has. Wes, this is a situation where Shedrick's trying to get position. And boy, that's a, that's a funny-looking thing right there. It looked like... Shedrick was a little more sinned against than sinning, but he's the guy that got called for the foul. So, second on Shedrick with 8.29 to play. That's a great job by Franklin to get position. Lots of times you're talking about trying to get position on the inside, but he just went to Shedrick and he blocked him out. Shedrick comes off the floor. As we noted a moment ago, Gardner returns. Remember, he's playing with the foul. So, in, in some ways, the Bennett logic worked. Well, he see, had a he, guy with only one, right. and the first guy picks up two. Kelly had it swatted out of there. Boy, Heck that was, of a play by Dunn. Boy, Dunn, he's got some skills, doesn't he? He's fun. Three to shoot. Terry drives, threw it up on the rim. Vanderplas the rebound. Virginia might not be as efficient shooting it here in the last few minutes, but they've kind of tried to tighten the screws up defensively. Clark a look off for Franklin. Long two. Howard gathers. That's a long contested two, Wes, and I don't know that's what you're looking for against this Georgia Tech defense. Terry fishes inside. Howard thought about it, resets, and misses. I think Howard was surprised that he was that open on the inside. He looked. There was nobody between he and the basket. Quick pass for Clark. Now baseline. Dunn lost the handle on it. 
Last touch, Tommy Morrissey says. And now Tommy Morrissey. And we're going to take a time out here. It might belong to the Jackets. At least for the time being, it belongs to Virginia. And we will step aside. Six-point lead for the Cavaliers in Atlanta. Has got four of their eight field goals from behind the three-point line to kind of move to this early six-point advantage. But are we watching a personality change of sort here with the Cavaliers today? Well, I don't know that you're watching a personality change, Wes. Obviously, they scored very well because they shot the ball very well in those first six games. In the last five games, they have not shot the ball as well, and they haven't scored it as well. So it's, it, you know, you score in a basketball game by putting the ball in the basket. Yeah. And Virginia, you know, they started out very hot in this game, but, West, they're only one for their last three shooting from three, and they're only one for their last six overall. Yeah. And so uh, Cavaliers, they do tend to run into a little bit of scoring droughts every now and again. Clark trying to put it in play, got deflected. Nicely done by Franklin. Georgia Tech with the turnover. Here's Sturdivant. Kick out Kelly three. Well, and again, Wes, he is down the court looking to shoot the three. And that turnover allows them an opportunity in transition. We've seen how tough this Virginia defense is when it can get set. And they didn't get set that time. Yep, Josh Pastor wanted transition chances and got a great one there from Kelly. He's got six to lead the Jackets off of Pastor's bench. Virginia Lee cut the three. Vanderplas lost the handle on it. Quickly, they move it for Beekman's triple. That's good. That's great ball movement by Virginia. And, West, those are the kind of shots that have to go down for the Cavaliers. Those wide-open shots after they do a great job moving the defense around. Of course, it would help anybody if those shots went down. So threes answered on either end of the floor. And now Kelly trying to work off of a screen of Howard. Franklin. He and Gardner are a nice matchup here today. Terry trying to fish along the baseline. Got caught in traffic. Tried to shovel it back in. Last touched. Oh, Bert Smith said. He says Franklin never no, touched. Courtney Green said Franklin never touched it, right? That's correct. Wow. And he was standing right there, Wes. Yeah, Courtney Green had the best seat in the house. Franklin's trying to get it, but he's right. He never touched it. It bounced off Howard. There you go. Hey Clark, nice ball movement. Here's Beekman again. Terry closes. Gardner had it picked out of there. Kelly, another Cavalier turnover, Dan. Well, Georgia Tech doing a much better job digging down when the ball gets inside. Kelly trying to use the screen, ends up hitting the deck and turning it over. Here's Kihei Clark with Terry to beat. Ball fake, draws the foul. First on Terry, third on Georgia Tech. Free throws coming for the uh, grad student, if you will, from Woodland Hills, California. Well, Kelly loses his feet. And that's a nice job by Franklin to pitch it ahead. And Kihei Clark, he's a great free throw shooter, just takes the ball right at the basket. Beekman was behind him in West. I don't know that that's a play particularly where you want to drop the ball off. Yeah. Kihei Clark. Getting a little uh, officiating courtesy from Bert Smith there. Took a bit of a fall underneath on the contact. So okay. here is Clark. That's a hard first foul. Two. Yep. Kihei is 76% at the line, and the first one good. Don't forget, every Sunday afternoon, we got women's basketball on ACC Network for you. Tomorrow, the game start at noon, and next week the same, but let's feature these two. Haley Van Lith and Louisville won six straight. They host Pitt at 2 Eastern, presented by Food Lion, and then Matchup of the day, number five, Notre Dame, and number 13, North Carolina. Sunday afternoons are for ACC Women's Basketball on ACC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Clark got one of the two. So it ends up being a good foul by Terry. Smith, the runner, and an offensive foul, Davon Smith. That'll be his second. That's four on Georgia Tech with 5.18 to play. Wes, you just, you cannot drive into the middle of this Virginia defense and leave your feet. Vanderplas is in great position. That's twice now that he has drawn charges on drives just by getting his feet set and getting in position. If you're Smith, you've got a jump stop in there and either shoot the short jump shot or find an open man. You see the turnover number's been doubled. Eight for Georgia Tech, four for Virginia. Beekman slashing in the hangar. 
at the side of the glass. Saved it on his own board for Clark's three. And that will bounce off the back of the rim and over the glass. Well, that's for two Tech. Virginia possessions where they weren't trying to and they hit the backboard. <laughs> so here's McNeely replacing Kihei Clark for Tony Bell. And again, Wes, the Virginia shooting, which was so hot to start this game, has cooled off substantially. Oh, it sure has. And Georgia Tech, even though they have not shot the ball well, trying to navigate this tough Virginia defense, they find themselves still in the game. Howard breaks about a two-and-a-half-minute scoring drought with his third field goal. Two-and-a-half-minute scoring drought, Wes, and you're still only down by five. Yep. Six for Rodney Howard who starts his third straight game here today. He's been averaging eight points in the last two starts. He's got better than half that here in the half. McNeely. Vanderplas the shot fake back for Isaac McNeely. Hard dribble off the wing. Beekman with two to shoot. Franklin from the logo. Front rim miss. And Howard pulls it away. Wes, he doesn't have to shoot the ball every time, but McNeely, I think, has to be ready to shoot every time he catches the ball. Yep. And I, I don't see that. It's he's like he's ready to make a move, but he's got to be ready to shoot the ball. Three ball, Kelly. Got it. Well, Miles Kelly's ready to shoot. Absolutely. Miles Kelly's always ready to shoot. But just like that, Wes, Georgia Tech is right back in this game, and Virginia facing the struggles they've faced over the last five games. They're just having a hard time putting the ball in the basket. Here's McNeely, Beekman up front. Franklin in the corner. There's the Georgia Tech pressure. Gets it to Gardner and scores. That is good, tough offense by Virginia. Haven't heard much from Gardner after a couple baskets early. Yep. Six for Jaden Gardner. The Cavalier lead is four. Just ahead of three to go in the opening half. Howard. A series of pivots, and now Moore trying to find something. A scoop with the right hand, and he's going to get Gardner's second foul out of it. How about that? Gardner commits his second, just under three minutes to go in his first half. That is six on Virginia, but a moment ago, Miles Kelly has come off the bench, poured in a couple of threes. He's got nine to lead the Jackets, who trail four in Atlanta. little conundrum on his hands here today, Dan. Well, he's got some guys in foul trouble, but you see they have a scoring drop four minutes and 17 seconds. Their shooting has really dropped off, and Georgia Tech has taken advantage. The defense hasn't been quite as good, and Kelly's been one of the reasons he's come off the bench on fire. All right, but the Cavaliers came into the ballgame. 37% of their field goal attempts in the regular season are threes. So far in this first half, 11 of 20 have been threes. Well, and that you just, I think that's too many. You know, analytics people will tell you you want to be beyond 40% with your three-point attempts, 40% of your attempts being three-point attempts. But Virginia has become overly dependent on that three-point shot. Jalen Moore's had seven straight double-figure games. He started the last seven for Passner. And gets his first point here. Miles Kelly came off the bench. He, too, had had seven straight double-figure games, and he's got West, nine in this first half. This, Moore hits both free throws, and the lead is two for Virginia. Pretty important last three minutes of this half. Virginia's got both of their starting big guys on the bench in foul trouble. The, the Georgia Tech zone now, they may be able to push out even a little bit more. Caparo back on the floor for Coach Bennett after Gardner picked up his second foul. McNeely stays out there, and Clark took his eye off of it. Ends up on the uh, lap of Randy Waters over there across the way at the Georgia Tech radio well, table. West and the Cavaliers, that's now five turnovers for Virginia in the game. And we still have two and a half minutes left to play in the first half. So that's a large number for this Virginia team. Yeah, Georgia Tech's got eight. At one point, it was 5-1. Here's Kelly shooting for another one. Rebound Vanderplas. Virginia still by two. Coming up on two minutes to play in the first half. McNeely. Off the screen of Caparo. Foul line, Vanderplas. Oh, nice cover by Smith, huh? Yeah, but Smith is much smaller than Vanderplas. Vanderplas had to shoot that ball. McNeely turned it over, and then Georgia Tech gives it right back, and here's Franklin. Got it. 
Boy, that is a huge basket for Virginia. Nine for Armand Franklin. He bangs home the three. And he's three of six from behind the line in the first half. Coleman trying to answer. Rattled out for McNeely. That's really good defense by Virginia. That is a tough three-point attempt. Deep in the corner there with somebody right in your face. Clark at the post. Quick skip, McNeely another one. Nope, slapped out. Franklin will run it down. Well, McNeely may have missed that, but he was ready to shoot the ball that time, Wes. And when he's, you know, he's recruited as a three-point shooter, when you get an open shot, you gotta take it. Davon Smith just committed his third with 1.14 to play. It's the fifth on Georgia Tech in this first half. So baseline out of bounds for the Cavaliers. Vanderplas, McNeely, and a... Here's T. A. Clark ahead of a minute to go. McNeely, a quick bounce pass. On the drive, wrap oh, what around. A pass. Caffaro couldn't finish. Oh my heavens, that was an outstanding pass. And boy, your Caffaro size, you've got to finish that one inside. Poppy missed the chippy. Here's the drive. Kelly couldn't finish. Franklin over his back, knocked it over the end line. Last touch by the Cavaliers. So it'll stay with Georgia Tech with 45 and a half to go and a five point game. And the Jackets gonna use the 30 user to lose it. So Pastner gathers his team for an important possession. When we come back to Atlanta, Virginia leading by five. Great to have you with us from McCamish Pavilion in Midtown Atlanta. Georgia Tech's second home game of three in the ACC and Smith travels. Oh, what a frustrating half for Davon Smith, Dan. Well, and that's twice now that Ben Vanderplas has jumped out on that screen and forced a turnover against Smith. And I, I guarantee you that's not what Josh Pastner had in mind when he called that timeout. You see the shot clock, game clock differentials. We wind down this first half. Franklin, McNeely on the drive, bounce through for Clark's three. Got it. Boy, Kihei Clark's got seven. Both the field goals are triples. Lead back to eight quickly for the Cavaliers. Inside Howard, turned over to Clark with 13 seconds left. Boy, that, that defense can just be stifling, can yep. it, Wes? Here's Clark with four. Kick into McNeely, three at the horn. Isaac McNeely and Virginia pour it on from behind the line in this first half. Well, Eight Wes, of Virginia's 13 field goals are threes. Well, and Georgia Tech is trying to defend the interior and this, again, this is a situation. Key Hare Clark drops the defense down, and McNeely's ready to go. There's no fakes. There's no trying to get control of the ball. Perfect pass by Key Hare Clark, and McNeely knocks it down. We get ready to start the second half. Really kind of the highs and lows for the Cavaliers. Start off high, a little bit of an ebb, and then upward trajectory at the close, Dan. Boy, they did a great job at the end of that first half, finding open shots, making those open shots. Keep in mind, though, that Shedrick and Gardner both have two personal fouls. And both are on the floor for Tony Bennett and the Cavaliers to start the second half. And here is Jalen Moore to Rodney Howard with eight to shoot and kick. And we'll get a reset on the clock to 20. You see that summary. That's, that's exactly what you were talking about, Wes. And Virginia, they have scored two-thirds of their points from beyond the arc. And... Uh, we saw in our summary there, that is not the, normally the case. Nope. Ooh. And now, and let's see if there it's a flagrant one. And Rodney Howard gets his first. Howard, who on the Shedrick. left hand corner of your screen, caught him with an elbow. And of course, the officials, they have to look at that because of where the contact occurs. Correct. And remember, the, the rule on a flagrant foul is it's contact that is unnecessary and or excessive. Right. And so, you know, was that unnecessary? Was it excessive? Or was he just putting his arm up there? Bert Smith, Courtney Green over for an evaluation. There's nothing there. So we play on. Just the foul, the common, if you will. 
Yeah, he, you know, he's not throwing an elbow out there. He's got his arms up, and right. Shedrick sort of runs into the elbow. Now, it's, it's the correct call, a common foul, but there wasn't anything excessive there, yeah. and you can't rule to say that that was unnecessary either. It's just, you know, you get big guys running around together on a basketball court, and that kind of stuff happens. So Virginia, the 11-point lead. And here are the Cavaliers with Beekman. Back for Clark. Kihei on the drive. And Franklin, who started the game with a three, tried to start the second half, and Shedrick, a tap follow and basket, and going to draw the foul on Debo Coleman. You know, Wes, that was a really strong play by Shedrick, and sometimes you watch him play, and he doesn't make strong plays, but this, he just goes straight up in the air, and that was a really good tip in traffic. And he gets pushed, and that's Coleman in there pushing him, and that's what the foul was called. Lots of times, Cedric struggles to finish through that contact, but he didn't that time. Big fellow from Holly Springs, North Carolina. And he's got a big grin on his face, yeah. and he should. Completes the three-point play. He's got five in the ball game. Virginia has opened up their largest lead. Here's a Clark steal and layup. Well, he terrorized Albany the other night in back-to-back -back possessions. And now he starts the second half with the pick and score. And the lead is 16 off Georgia Tech's two turnovers now in this second half. Coleman trying to right the Jackets. Knocked away Franklin. Armand battles for it. Tried to save it to Clark. Look out. Courtney Green and Lance Terry. Tony Bennett all almost ended up over here with Bonner and I. Thank goodness they all stayed on that side of the table. Well, this is some kind of a scramble here. Look at this. Nice job by Sturdivant to break things up. And here Terry <laughs> comes over. That's some of your best work, by the way. Well, it's self-preservation is what that's called, <laughs> Wes. Notice that Coach Bennett moved out of our way. There was no help from him well, protecting he, no, us. No, yeah. no help at all. He shows he still has quickness, though, getting out of harm's way. Here is Clark trying to that's fish through, travel. and that's a travel. Yep. bit of a balky start at both ends of the floor with the exception of the well, Cedric follow. I, I, I think I think that Virginia takes this start. <laughs> yeah. On the drive, there goes Sturdivant, offensive foul. Boy, the Cavaliers have done a good job of finding the driving lanes defensively. Well, that's three times now they've taken a charge just outside the restricted area. And I, again, I think Virginia's a really hard team. You can get by them on the perimeter, but it's just going to be hard to get all the way to the basket, and you have to recognize that. You get in there, you draw a defender, you find the open man. Two minutes gone, second half. Virginia has taken an 11-point lead and expanded it to 16. On five in a row to start the frame. Franklin trying to make it eight. Cannot on the three that missed. Coleman and Georgia Tech. Georgia Back. Tech's got to make a little bit of a push, Wes. Sturdivant missing on the long three, and the transition opportunity might have put the Jackets ahead of their transition somewhat against Virginia. Shedrick foul line. And what a tap follow try by Franklin that just missed. And now Sturdivant. And Franklin trying to take it from him. Hell ball is going to send it to Virginia on possession. Cavaliers are maybe back to more of their scrappiness at the defensive end. Well, West Franklin just does a nice job. He gets his hands low and anticipates the crossover dribble. And then what a nice job using his body to protect the ball. West, that's twice in this half that they've stolen the ball from Georgia Tech and the one play where they almost had it for a transition opportunity. They ended up keeping the possession. Clark had it blocked, swatted by Smith. <laughs> a bit of a reach there for Kihei Clark. You don't see him do that very much. Yep. On the drive, skip out, Beatman the soft jump shot. Good for three. Eight for Reese Beatman, just 10 three of the year. 19 point lead, largest of the afternoon for Virginia. Howard can't stop the streak. It's a great job by Shedrick. It's an eight nothing run by Virginia to start this second half. Wes, remember, it wasn't that long ago that this was a two point game. And Gardner makes it a 10 nothing run. 
his fourth field goal. Lead is 21 now for the Cavaliers. Coleman and Georgia Tech just trying to find some points here. They can stem this Wahoo tide that has opened the second 20 minutes. Most of it sparked by the defense. Terry tried to go to Howard, stolen by Clark. Wes, and that's the way Virginia wants to play. It it's all starts with their defense, but when they can play defense like that and make shots, and that's what they've been doing, you just get an idea of how dangerous this Virginia team can be. 10 for Jaden Gardner. And the Cavalier fans that are here in Midtown Atlanta love it. 23-point lead for number 13, Virginia. With the afterburners, they have four, four turnovers. In fact, they have four steals, excuse me, in this half. Georgia Tech has really had a tough time hanging on to the ball. Kihei Clark, this started the whole thing, but this is a Virginia team that has ramped it up on defense, and they're making their shots on the offensive end. This, this game, if Virginia at one point led in this game, 25 to 23, right. and Georgia Tech actually had a shot to tie or take the lead. And now the Cavaliers have distanced themselves with the start of this second half. Georgia Tech's played four minutes and 10 seconds, roughly, of scoreless basketball. And Virginia, meanwhile, has forced in, as you mentioned a moment ago, the, was it, six turnovers now? Yeah, yes. 11 and a half. Make that seven, Wes. Make it seven. And five steals. Gardner the dunk. A dozen for Gardner. Cavaliers love it. And they've doubled the number on Georgia Tech. Well, if you're Georgia Tech, Wes, you just got to you just gotta toughen up here a little bit. You know, you got to step to the ball. You got to make hard cuts. You got to drive the ball to the basket. Kelly. They need points. And he was their guy in the first half. Jalen Moore at the foul line, a front rim miss. Inside Franklin, Shedrick blocked it out of there. And here, front court come the Cavaliers. Inside Gardner. He's got six points already in the second half. Doesn't in the ball game. Missed it, Shedrick tried to follow and there's gonna be a Georgia Tech foul against Terry. That'll be two wow. on Terry and that'll be three on the Jackets. Shedrick will get free throws but a moment ago Gardner finishes with the dunk and the lead for Virginia is 25 in Atlanta. Two field goal attempts in the half. They've got seven turnovers. The Virginia defense has ramped it up. And Wes, you know one of the reasons why the Virginia defense is so good? On that last play where Franklin tried to take the ball against Shedrick and he shot the ball. Right. And Shedrick blocked the shot. And the shot clock, before Virginia recovered, the shot clock reset. So Virginia blocks the shot. The shot clock resets by accident. Right. Virginia gets the ball, and as Virginia is dribbling the ball up the court, Tony Bennett is yelling, wait a minute, why did the clock reset? Right. So Tony Bennett wants everything. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he, when he demands that, his players give it to him. Interesting. We started this day talking about the end of non-conference play, right? Feels like we ought to show you the standings here of the top eight in the ACC. And as you mentioned at the top, Miami was preseason four, Clemson preseason 11, Pitt preseason 14. And they're the only three left undefeated in league play. Well, Wes, that's interesting. And if you just go a couple of weeks ago, nobody would have anticipated Florida State winning two of their first right. three games. Now, the Seminoles struggled early. They're starting to get healthy. But, th I, Wes, I think this is going to be a great, great league. You well, know, we had that, you know, that Duke-Wake Forest game that was a tremendous game. Yeah. Um, so here's my question. Okay. If you're Virginia, okay, now you lose a game at Miami. No sin in losing to a team that's 4-0 in the ACC. But if you're Virginia, by the way, you're playing here today and it's going well. The next game is Tuesday night at now 3-0 Pitt coming off the Carolina win yesterday for Jeff Capel's team. And by the way, they've done a very nice job. Huh. Their last loss was a head scratcher in Nashville to Vanderbilt. They've turned around now and won their last four, Dan. But Pitt is playing very well, Wes. 
Uh, and, I, you know, the thing is, it's obvious they got it going again at the Peterson Event Center. The place yep. was crazy for the North Carolina game. And so Virginia is really going to be walking into the Lions' den up there. But, Wes, this is called Welcome to the ACC. Right. You know, we're playing ACC games from here on out, and there just isn't going to be anything easy anywhere. Shedrick, out of the timeout, will go to the line here. Unless you make it easy, as Virginia has made it here, you know, the last about the last three minutes of the first half to now, they have been a juggernaut. So here is Shedrick at the line, and it is of note as he knocks the first one down. Tony Bennett comes to the floor today in Atlanta, 71 and 46 in his Virginia career on the road in the ACC. And with the retirement of Mike Shashevsky, he has won 61% of his road games, so it's easy to assume he's the active career leader. Hubert Davis, after yesterday's loss to Pitt, is seven and five. He's won 58%. <laughs> Just to show you how difficult it is to win these road games. And Virginia, you know, what, Cavaliers West, have been pretty steady in that department for more than a handful of years. Well, Wes, you have to say uh, that Virginia under Tony Bennett, they've established themselves. And Georgia Tech finally gets a basket on a really tough shot. Virginia's one of the premier programs, not only in the Atlantic Coast Conference, but in the country. That's right. First points for Georgia Tech in the second half. Come from Javon Franklin on Shedrick's third, and it's the first on the Cavaliers. So here is Franklin to the line. Shedrick will come off. Vanderplas has returned for Virginia. Well, Shedrick is in there trying to block the shot, and if he goes straight up in the air, he's fine. And a free throw good for Javon Franklin. He did not start today after a seven-point game in 14 minutes against Clemson. Josh Pastor was concerned about Virginia's bigs. They're shrinking the defense a little bit. Miles Kelly also did not draw a start today. He's come off the bench and, of course, had nine in the first half. He's scoreless here, as is Georgia Tech, with the exception of the three-point trip a moment ago. But Wes, keep in mind that coming into this game, Georgia Tech was in the top ten in the country in fewest turnovers per game and in three-point field goal percentage defense, and Virginia has roasted them in both areas. Vanderplas missed the tap of the Clark miss. Howard pulled it away. Now there's a lot of time left in this game. Nice look away, Sturdivant to Rodney Howard. Eight for Howard. So five in a row by the Jackets. Still a 22-point differential. Clark, Vanderplas, right side, Franklin. Look away, fall away, Gardner on the baseline. Boy, he is money with that mid-range jump shot. Just can't tell you how much I think he's improved from last year oh, to this no year. Oh, there's no question. There's yeah. no question. But Wes, you come in, you get comfortable. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, when you say he's improved, when you talk about Jaden Gardner, as you see the ball knocked away, last touch by Georgia Tech. Jake Gardner was top 20 in four statistical categories a year ago in the ACC. <laughs> it's not like he was just a marginal guy. I mean, he averaged 15.6 rebounds and shot 47% from the floor last year in conference play, Dan, for Virginia, who, by the way, finished 12-8. and eight. Everybody saw the Cavaliers kind of in that middle group. Eh, they were fine, right? No, they were good. But well, West, they, they suffered some head scratching losses in the non conference part of the season. And with the way, let's see Gardner miss one like that very often. But with the way the, the, the net works and yeah. the evaluations, you know, you, if you have a bad November and December, it's hard to recover. Yep. There's a drive by Kelly. And a foul called. And foul is going to be on Isaac McNeely. Wes, and I think it's, I think it's a testament to the level that this Virginia program has achieved that last year they won 12 games in the ACC. They won more than 20 overall. They went to the NIT, and the people in Charlottesville thought that was a disaster. Yeah. I can remember a time when they would have had a parade if that happened. Yeah. Back when you wore the canvas orange Chuck Taylors? <laughs> Just asking. Is that about that era? That's about that time. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Kelly, the free throw. Good. He's got 10. Don't worry. forget we got more ACC basketball for you. Coming up on ACC Network Wednesday night, a double dip for you. Number 17, Duke at NC State in Raleigh starts our coverage at 7. And then Wake Forest is in Chapel Hill, 9 o'clock Wednesday night. 
Basketball on ACC Network streaming live on the ESPN app. Dan and I look forward to seeing the tobacco Power. road game, if you will. That's Miles Kelly with a hold in the backcourt. That'll be his first, fourth on Wait. Georgia Tech off the whistle of Burt Smith. You know, if you're going to hold, you can't be the one guy the referee's standing there looking at. Yeah. You have to have some stealth about you. Get all four of those North Carolina schools gathered and squaring off on uh, Friday night, huh? Duke at State and Wake at Chapel Hill. Boy, that's fun. Here's Gardner missing the soft jump shot. Franklin the rebound, Georgia Tech. And, of course, Georgia Tech, they wanted to play in transition as part of their game plan, but now they have to, yeah. and that's hard to do against Virginia. They get back very well. Pull up Coleman. Bounces away, and Clark, the backside rebound, and that whistle shrill you hear is from Tony Bennett, adjacent to us at the Virginia bench. That's a Jim Laranega-esque whistle. All right, I was getting ready to say, we only have one or one other one in the league like that that belongs to the coach of the Canes. Here is Franklin on the transition layup and the foul on McNeely. Javon Franklin has sparked Georgia Tech a little bit here in the second half. Jack it seems like longer than that, Wes, yeah. but DeAndre Hunter, obviously an outstanding player yeah. on that national championship team. And a lot of people forget, uh, you know, when they lost that 116 game there, he was hurt and they didn't play, and he didn't play. Good to see Dre, who's doing a terrific job here in Atlanta. Of course, with the Hawks, who had the Lakers last night. Franklin missed the back end of the three-point trip. And this is a Virginia team that we have out here on the court today, Wes, that started the season with the kind of offensive numbers that that 2019 team put up. Franklin, the miss of the three. Of course, zero on the floor for the Cavaliers was yeah. a prominent piece of that title. T. A. Clark. Well, he made one of the most iconic oh plays God. in Virginia history in that Elite Eight game against Purdue yeah. when he didn't panic yeah. and found Mamadi Diakite for that unbelievable basket. Yeah. Right side three, Miles Kelly strong, and the rebound for Franklin. Nine gone here in half two, and the Jackets with a fresh 20 off of this. Strickland trying to find an outlet here on the dribble, and Howard can't hang on to it. That's really a nice job by Vanderplas. He's trying to get back to Howard, but he keeps his hands up, and the, the Georgia Tech just throws the ball right into his hand, and he knocks it away and goes off Howard. So it's a 20-point game. Beekman back. Clark out for Coach Bennett. And I'll tell you one thing, Wes. It's a 20-point game, but Tony Bennett is still going to expect the kind of defensive intensity that got them to this 20-point lead. Yep. Center of the floor is the Indiana transfer, Franklin, now in his second season in Charlottesville. Vanderplas trying to help him with the screen. Here's Beekman. Franklin step in two. And oh. Kelly almost tapped it back into the basket. Well, I'm telling you, Virginia doesn't need any help on that score today. No. Strickland. That's a great pass. Nice catch. Franklin missed the layup. Spun off the back iron, and it belonged to Ryan Dunn. That time Virginia didn't get back to the guy rolling to the basket, but boy, you got to have that one. Yep, sure do. McNeely, skip for Franklin. Past the midway point of the second half, and here is Beekman for three. Off the miss, Dunn the dunk. Well, West Georgia Tech has abandoned that zone defense. They're trying to pressure the Cavaliers with man-to-man, -man, and somebody just missed out a, missed a blockout responsibility. Yep. So it's a 22-point Cavalier lead and a turnover by Georgia Tech. Vanderplas has been very active defensively yeah. today, Wes. He's only taken two shots, but he's been in the middle of everything. Of course, <laughs> that'll count. That'll be his third shot, and it doesn't go in the basket, but it counts because it's a goal time. First basket from the floor today for Ryan for Ben Vanderplas. And a nice feed here by Dunn. Here's the Dunn follow dunk. Dunn, you know, he doesn't play a lot of minutes, Wes, but I think one of the things that's going to be important to this Virginia team is that Dunn 
as he progresses and gets more minutes that they have to be productive minutes for this Cavalier team, I think, to reach their full potential. I think there was probably a thought that he might redshirt too, Dan, and it didn't materialize because some of those injury things Virginia had going on in the offseason too, right? Well, yeah, but I, I, again, it's Virginia has done a great job. You just under Tony Bennett, you just look at their history developing players. Yeah. Now, of course, the players, they've got to work hard and they've got to be patient with things. But Dunn is a guy who has shown flashes. Yep. Has an awful lot of potential. Debo Coleman just drew his third a moment ago. Fifth on Georgia Tech. Armand Franklin will come out. Clark reports back. So you got Vanderplas, Dunn, Clark, McNeely, and Bigman. You essentially got five three-point shooters on the floor now for Virginia. Against the Georgia Tech lineup that's downsized quite a bit too, because you got Franklin on the floor at listed at 6'7, probably closer to 6'5. Georgia right. Tech back to the zone. Jalen Moore is a 6'7 guy. Those are the two largest jackets on the floor. There's a jump shot that's short from Beak. Wes, I think they went back to that zone because Virginia did downsize so much. Mm. Coleman playing now with three fouls. A little scoop on McNeely. <laughs> Second field goal for Debo Coleman gives him six in the ball game. Now Coleman's just got a size and experience advantage in there, and Virginia didn't come to help. No. Lead is 24 now for the Cavaliers. As Dan told you, a 25 to 2 run essentially created this margin. Clark in traffic, skips. McNeely a three ball. Got it. Isaac McNeely's got nine. Well, All three of them are triples. And if you're Kihei Clark, you cannot make a better pass than that. McNeely didn't have to do anything except let it go. And there's another Georgia Tech turnover. Beekman for Clark. Kihei to the basket. The scoop! 11 for Clark. Second double figure game in his last four. The margin is 26. Coleman calling for it, and he'll draw Beekman's foul on the reach. First on Reese Beekman and the fourth of the half on Virginia. Timeout in Atlanta. Kihei Clark played a million games in the ACC. <laughs> Here is a scoop and score on Javon Franklin. We get to the break in Atlanta. Of course, took the Jackets to Denver at McNichols Sports Arena in the final four and 90. And he is a regular attender of basketball and tries to get to football here in Atlanta when he can during the year. On the drive, Franklin, layup good. He and Carolyn here today. And you know, he appreciates Tony Bennett and the fact he ties Terry Holland today too, Dan. He respects it. He and Terry Holland had some terrific games. Oh, good heaven. Here's Clark again. Look at that. I don't know that you that you want that in your playbook against the press, Wes, but how, how did he keep that ball? Yep. Clark, last two baskets have been whirling dervishes, right? The scoop and score a moment ago against Franklin. That time he went big game hunting again at the line, at the rack. Well, Franklin and Shedrick are really going at it. Yep. Out front here is Sturdivant. Rubbing off the Franklin screen. Five to shoot. Sturdivant looking for an alley. There'll be a foul on Clark. Courtney Green, I think, will tag Kihei Clark for his first. Fifth on Virginia. Of note, by the way, Clark the other night, I mean, there's so many things when you play as many games as he has. <laughs> and look, Not a million, Wes. This is 140. I know, but the other night, whoa, look out. Javon Franklin, the catch and dunk on Shedrick. All Nine of his points are in the second half. Franklin's got four assists. Here's a little pressure by Georgia Tech. McNeely looping ahead for Dunn. Clark, by the way, uh, passed Mark Price for 10th in minutes played in ACC history the other night against Albany. Here is Sturdivant ahead for Kelly. That's going up and in. 14 for Miles Kelly, who's averaged better than 15 in the last seven coming in. 
Shedrick front court and back for Clark. And if you're Virginia, you don't gotta you don't want to get lured into a racehorse game at this point that creates a lot of possessions. But there you see Georgia Tech trying to push out. And the one person who sees it immediately is Kihei Clark. What an easy play and an easy yep, basket. Sure did. Inside out of a double team. Here's oh Kelly, my. another long three. And McNeely the rebound. Well, the Cavaliers are rarely in a hurry, and they're certainly not in any hurry now. So a timeout taken by Virginia. So, well, playing with a guy like Key A. Clark is going to do a lot of things for Virginia. But, Dan, I keep thinking today what it's going to mean to a player like Isaac McNeely. Well, and down they, the road, you talk about player development in Virginia. Some of it comes from experience, and McNeely's getting one of the great grad classes, if you will, as a freshman in ACC basketball. Well, to be able to play with a guy like Kihei Clark, you can see that's that's how you play point guard in yeah. this league. And when you're playing with a guy like Kihei Clark, you've got to get yourself open and you've got to be ready because he's going to find you. Yeah. And after a couple misfires early in the game, McNeely has gotten himself ready yeah. and has allowed Kihei Clark to locate him. Isaac McNeely is from Polka, West Virginia, Dan, and played at Polka High School. Okay. Do you know the nickname of Isaac McNeely's high school team? The Penguins? No. The Dots. Oh, that's very good. The Polka Dots. That's very good. Yeah. I was looking for alliteration there, but no, that's 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 very good. Yeah, very good, right? You like that? Like the old Indiana high school nicknames? The <laughs> Frankfurt Hot Dogs, right? The Speedway Spark Plugs of Indiana high school basketball lore. Isaac McNeely is a polka dot. There you have it. I know what you're thinking. Somebody West, was West been waiting on that one all day, hadn't he? Yes, he has. Well, yeah. I was getting that one in. Here's Clark at the line. Whoever gave him that nickname has to be very pleased with themselves. And front end of one and one missed by Kihei Clark. Virginia slaps it out for a second chance with under five to go. Shedrick, now Clark. Oh, what a pass. And McNeely caught and stepped out of bounds. Well, McNeely West, when he caught that ball, he wasn't looking to shoot it. He was looking to drive the ball. And I'm not saying every time he catches that he has to shoot it. Right. But when, Ke when you're standing beyond the three-point line and you're a shooter and Kihei Clark is trying to pass you the ball, you got to be ready to go and you got to make sure you're on the court. 24-point lead for Virginia with four and a half to go. Caparo has come in. Dunn knocked that away over the inline. It'll stay with Georgia Tech. So you got Caparo, and it used to be Cafaro. Francisco has... The pronunciation has been updated, if you will. Redshirt senior from Santa Fe in Argentina. And there's a three by Lance Terry. And Eric Bacher, who handles the basketball publications and PRs for Virginia, telling us about Poppy, Francisco's nickname, being updated to Caffaro. And that is the way he prefers it to be pronounced. And we will oblige. Even though for a couple of years he's been Cafaro, Franklin fouled on a drive. And the foul going to be on Miles Kelly. Well, the free throws coming. The young man deserves to be called by his correct name. That's it. But, uh, you know, maybe you should tell people a little earlier than your redshirt senior year. <laughs> Cafaro. You know, we have not intentionally mispronounced that. No, no, the that's absolutely name. the fact. And Armand Franklin at the line. He's got double figures now for the third time in the last four games. And you see, here comes Tane Murray. Speaking of uh, the international flair of Virginia's roster, there's Murray from Auckland in the North Island of New Zealand. Are we sure that's the correct pronunciation? Yes, for Murray, okay. yes. Okay. Very you. confident about that. Franklin's got 11, so Murray's on the floor for the first time with McNeely, Clark, Shedrick has come back in after veteran trainer Ethan Saliba checked him out a moment ago at the bench. With Franklin, there's a three from Miles Kelly. Wait, he, he can really I, shoot it. Kelly came in the ball game off the bench for the first time in eight games today, went to work from a scoring perspective, and got Georgia Tech to within, you know. Well, they were within two. It was 25 yeah. to 23 at one point in this game. Yep. 
and Georgia Tech actually had a shot at that point to tie or take the lead. Yep, Cavaliers had a flirt in the first half, led it 11, and then went on a 10 nothing run to start second half. Kihei Clark, meanwhile, has got 15 in the ball game, including eight in the second half. You know, we showed Jimmy Miller a little earlier, the Virginia radio analyst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Kihei Clark just passed Jimmy Miller with oh, that boy. basket on the all-time Virginia scoring line. Goodness. So on the drive, Franklin has it blocked by Shedrick. Javon got the dunk a moment ago with Shedrick, and now Shedrick returns the favor. And we got an offensive foul on Shedrick as Kelly steps in front. And we're going to take a break with them. Fourth on Shedrick, sixth on Virginia, 3.05 to go at McCamus Pavilion. Cavaliers by 22. Puck down a couple of three pointers. He's got he's two for three from out there. He's got 15 points in the game. He's driven the ball very effectively to the basket. He's got three steals. How he did this, <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. But he's got 15 points, eight assists. Two rebounds, three steals. He twisted Javon Franklin at the basket twice. One on the scoop and the other one on the straight go, huh? Cavaliers have got Clark, Franklin, Shedrick, Murray, and McNeely out there. Tough shot for Sturdivant, by the way, who's got a career high in his assist with eight. Rebounded by Shedrick. We're under three to go here. And Virginia trying to get to 10 and 2 and 2 and 1 in the ACC and Georgia Tech who started 0 and 4 in the ACC last year looking at an 0 and 3 start with Miami here on Wednesday night and there is a foul on Franklin which will be 7 or 8 8 on Georgia Tech and 1 and 1 coming up and now all of a sudden, Franklin's out, and Chase Coleman has checked in. Senior from Norfolk. You see Armand Franklin, who started this game the right way. And then here's a one and one coming for Shedrick. Shedrick's made all three of his free throws so far today. Yep. All have come here in the second half. Free throw is good. Don't forget, Sundays on ACC Network. Or about the ladies' game, a full series of games starts a week from Sunday at noon. Well, 2 o'clock, Pitt and Louisville with the great Haley Van Lift presented by Food Line. And then, how about the top 15, if you will? Number 5, Notre Dame visits Carmichael to see Courtney Banghart, number 13, North Carolina, 4 o'clock. Two of the four for you on ACC Network and always on the ESPN app. Tristan Howe at 6'7", a junior first-year walk-on from Virginia Beach into the lineup for just the second time this year. And there's a three-pointer by Kelly. You know, he's so far out west, you think, well, he's not really going to shoot this. So <laughs> we got to get out and guard him because he's very anxious to shoot it. He shot it all the way to 20 points today, Dan. He is the game's leading scorer. Here's Miles Kelly. And Kyle Sturdivant, a foul in the backcourt. Well, we said he's a high-volume three-point shooter is Kelly. And he shot it very well today. And he's got deep range. And the other thing, Wes, is he is really quick. And so if people start pushing out on him to defend that three, he's got the capability to go by. He can be, I think, a big-time scorer here at Georgia Tech. Yeah. Free throw is good. Second attempt of the year for... Uh, Chase Coleman. And he'll miss the back end. So Coleman gets one of the two. Don't forget, use the hashtag all the devotion to submit your pictures from ACC action, be it basketball or any of the sports. Stay tuned to ACC Network to see if you're a feature. That ball got knocked away last touch by Georgia Tech. Wes, there's different players in the game. We're at the end of the game, but they're still out there stealing the ball. Yeah. Now you got Murray, McNeely with Coleman. Here's a cross-court pass. Murray the catch. Double team is there with under two to go. Here's Ryan Dunn. Now back to Coleman. 
22-point lead for Virginia on the way to beating Georgia Tech for a 10th straight time. And Tony Bennett going to be 17-2 against the Yellow Jackets, Dan. That ball got knocked away. There is how the catch couldn't score. Recovers couldn't finish. Shot clock went off, but the ball hit the rim, and three cracks at it for Tristan Howe came away empty. Boy, when you're a first-year walk-on, you'd like to have those back. Yep. And there's a foul on Coleman on the Terry drive. And a couple of shots coming for Lance Terry. Seventh against Virginia. Two free throws here, I believe. So 74 to 52 it is with 78 seconds left. Terry, the free throw, gives him six in the ball game. And Tony Bennett, Dan, is going to easily reach win 326 in Charlottesville. And he will be tied with the legendary Terry Holland for Virginia's all-time coaching victories in their basketball program's history. Here is Dunn, Murray in the front court in the final 70 seconds. And here's the note that's also out there. Tony Bennett has had nine straight years of 10 or more wins in ACC play. This is how you get to the Terry Holland mark, if you will. Nine straight years of 10 or more wins in the ACC, and today's going to be two, and I understand we got a lot of things to go. But he's had 11 straight winning ACC records, okay? Only two other coaches have had 11 straight seasons of winning marks in ACC play. I would guess that their names are Dean Smith and Mike Shusevsky. You would be correct. Well, again, that, that's a perfect illustration of what Tony Bennett has done yep. with this program. Yep. And, yep. You, and you know this as an alum, the affection and admiration he has for Terry Holland and Ann Holland and their family is what, unbelievable. Well, Tony is a guy of such high character. Yep. But it would be hard for anybody to not have admiration for Terry Holland. You're right. You know, Terry Holland is one of the, I mean, he's a great coach, but he's one of the all-time great people. Uh, you know, Terry Holland, he, he was, he's kind, he's humble. Uh, you know, he's a guy, as a coach, he could let you know exactly what he wanted. He could let it be known in no uncertain terms, but he never had to berate you. He never yeah. did that. And he was always, you know, he was always willing to listen. And, you know, it was just, you know, I got one year with Terry Holland at Virginia. Yeah. You know, my senior season at Virginia was Terry Holland's first year. Now, the next year, Terry Holland's team won the ACC Tournament Championship. And I told him I helped lay the foundation. And he told me <laughs> once he got rid of the Deadwood, they could have some success. Yeah. And so, but it's just... You know, those two guys, the, the pairing of Terry Holland and Tony Bennett, I think, is really appropriate. Yep. And a beautiful article yesterday by David Teal in the Richmond Times-Dispatch just outlining what Terry Holland's legacy, and yes, at 80 years of age, and in a, in a battle now with Alzheimer's that's been discussed, as you know, Dan, and David wrote about it yesterday beautifully, and Tony Bennett's understanding of that. And the way, what, five years ago, it will be, uh, what, four years ago, I guess, coming up now here in March, the way he included Terry and Ann Holland in Virginia's march to Minneapolis. Well, I, again, Tony Bennett, that, that was a wonderful thing to do, but you'd be surprised if Tony Bennett didn't do that. Yep. You know, that's, that's the kind of person Tony Bennett is. But, uh, you know, and like I say, it's just it's remarkable that two people like that uh, share, you know, now share the win total at Virginia. Yep. And he will have a chance to uh, set it on Tuesday night at Pittsburgh. It's going to be heck of a, they're going to have to have a heck of an effort to win up there. Well, Jeff Capel's got the Panthers playing at a very, very high level. At 3-0 and in ACC play after a win yesterday over North Carolina. Shot clock's gone off. Virginia is going to post this win. Cavaliers are going to go to 10-2. And, and they'll be 2-1 and one in the ACC. That 25 to two run, Dan, the difference in the ball game. Well, and that Virginia, they just, they kept, they defended, they defended, and all of a sudden they got hot. And, you know, they if Virginia's gonna hit you with a 25 to two run, you're in trouble, and the Jackets were in trouble. Well, Tony Bennett's now tied Harry, Terry Holland for the most wins.